Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined today uh, from Durban by Danchel Moodley. Welcome to the show, my brother, and what's happening? Cool, man. Thanks for having me. Only a pleasure, man. Thanks for making some time out for us. I know uh, you've got a big fight just around the corner, and I'm sure things are very hectic. Um, bro, where I'd really like to start is, is, is just kind of gather your story on, on how you find yourself as a professional mixed martial artist and, and, and the road that led you there. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I started karate at a very young age. It's like almost 13 years old. Just a local club down my, where I was, down my house where I was actually living. And um, did that for about six years. And then I heard about this MMA gym or this cage fighting uh, thing that everybody was talking about. And I said, you know, I want to try something different because they're like, you know, karate is pretty much more semi-contact. And, you know, it's a touch, touch. I was never a touch guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's kind of a long story short. Uh, we went, I joined the gym and um, for like one year, I was actually a really fat kid. Uh, <laughs> I was 80, I think I was 85 kilos before I started MMA. And now I'm quite 50. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's quite a change, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I never think I'll be fighting at a fl- at flyweight division. Now I can't think about, I can think about going to Bantam or fly, but then, yeah, I, I, it's just a lifestyle change. And then um, the next the next thing after that, I, I found myself fighting with uh, fighting at the amateur local amateur event, and then also being surrounded by so many guys that actually turn pro. And then obviously, you know, you are uh, who, who you surround yourself with. Sure. And uh, guys like Craig Nino, Cameron Menkes, Nelson Fertera. So you know, all of those guys, you know, try to sort of like inspired me to want to live my dream as a professional fighter as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, here I am today. <laughs> 100%. And, and which was that uh, gym, the first gym that you stepped into? Uh, the, the first gym I, I trained out of was um, uh, combat coaching. Okay. Like, uh, we went as team MMA fighter then. I obviously made the transition into a new team, uh, Domination, last year. Um was it last year, beginning of last year? Okay. And, um, uh, sounds like you got angry whale, man. Sorry, man, I lost you there. It says it sounds like you got an angry whale there. Yeah, yeah, there's some weird noise going on outside you, but I don't know what that is, man. <laughs> but it's, yeah, some very, very strange noise happening. It sounds like a, like a crazy tap or something. Anyways, but what I wanted to ask you was, um, um, what was the reason for your change, man? Was it just like a, a growth kind of thing? You were looking for a little bit more. Um, obviously, uh, we know Clint Walters is a serious dude, and it's a, you get a great education there. Um, so, just talk us through what was what was your reasoning there? Um, well, yeah, you know, I was in the same gym for two and a half years. Um, it wasn't not, it wasn't anything personal. Sure. Um, I just, I just decided to make the transition uh, into a new gym where. Uh, you know, now I have, um, I've, I've got Clint, which is my head coach, stand-up coach, my Muay Thai coach, my boxing coach. I've got separate coaches who are my wrestling coaches, my jiu-jitsu coaches. And, um, you know, obviously the move for me was, you know, for more training partners as well. Um, you know, I've got guys a lot, of, a lot, not necessarily my weight, but, you know, all uh, quite, quite active guys in terms of uh, fighting whether it's the amateurs or, or, or pro fighters. So at the same time, you need guys who are active in the same gym, you know, guys who have a, who have a common goal and, you know, and that's obviously to fight at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy at the new gym. Clint is a really serious guy. He puts a lot of um, uh, conditions on his fighters in order for them to into the cage. Um, but essentially it should be like that because, you know, you as a fighter, if you're not ready, it's, very dangerous to get in there with somebody who wants to knock your head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, man. You've definitely got to be ready for what what you're about to do. <laughs> another, sure. another thing I want to ask you, I, I picked up in there. When did you make the the cognitive decision that uh, being a professional MMA fighter is what you wanted to do? Uh, I actually have to ask. I, I sometimes I ask myself, you know, how did I actually get to this point? <laughs> um, it, it's sort of like the journey sort of like digested me and I, I just went along with it. Um, obviously, our, our goals align every time you win a fight or every time, you know, you watch your uh, teammates fight. Uh, but I, I think it was, when, I, when I turned amateur, I had a, 
title shot and obviously the guy turned pro and then I was supposed to fight for that title. I didn't really, I always wanted to be a pro fighter because I was always training with pro fighters, but um, yeah, I just, I, just, I just went along with the journey and uh, yeah. Okay, awesome, man. So it just progressed organically. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, right, obviously you've got uh, what's being built quite a quite a big fight. Uh, you, you guys are, are are the rising contenders of the flyweight division. Um, you're, you're fighting in Durban again. Firstly, what is that like fighting in front of your home crowd in in, in what's become such a massive event on the EFC calendar? Um, you know what, uh, fighting at home is always uh, an advantage for for me. Um, first of all, you have your own bed to sleep in. You've got your own tub to wait in. You got your own gym to wrap your hands in. Sure. So, so from that, from the from a comfortability perspective, um, it, it, it couldn't be better fighting at home. And you know, having your family and your friends and you know the people you love watching you gives you obviously gives you inspiration when you walk in there and you're highly motivated to you know please the crowd. Um, but in terms of pressure, I mean, I've, I've honestly been fighting for quite some time now. Um, I haven't been fighting as long as other guys, but I think seven years is quite a long time for some guys to be fighting. Sure. Had a long amateur career. So my mind's even on this level, like as a thinking like a professional, even to the end of being an amateur. Um, so fighting at home, gotta love it. Uh, I'm gonna be feeding off the crowd, especially towards being on the main card and uh yeah i respect uh, octavia enough to train my best so uh, we, we were actually prepared to take a fight in april but um graham didn't have any flyweight for us i was willing to even go up to bantam yeah so, so graham said he had a bigger fight for me in uh in durban so yeah uh just waited patiently and trained hard in the interim waiting for the call Okay, awesome. Um, you, you, you mentioned uh, Jose Mar Octavio, your opponent. Um, what do you make of him? Obviously, he's he's billed as a bit of a ground specialist. That seems to be where he finishes his fight. Um, we know mm -hmm. from from that region of the world, the boys come quite tough and quite strong, and, and are usually uh, very educated on the ground. Um, is that something you've been considering in your camp? Look, you know, you know. Again, I think Clint puts a lot of uh, conditions on us, so we always trained for. We're walking in to fight the best. We're fighting a world champion wrestler, fighting a black belt in Jiu Jitsu, or even a world champion in boxing. So, you know, we've been um, training extensively in every uh, category of fighting. So it hasn't, it was not a case of I'm concerned about his stand up or concerned about his uh, Jiu Jitsu. It's just that we got a piece of the puzzle that we need to put together. And um, yeah, so you know, in order for us to execute our plans on the night, he has to fall into uh, fall into mind. Okay, and um, y y you're a guy who's who's gone two on the trot. He's also gone two on the trot. Um, it's being bold as as rising contenders. So. W if you manage to get this win here, where do you see yourself in the division? Is, is there a title around the corner? You know. Um, Obviously, the goals are to be a champion. Um, the every fight you get closer to the belt, of course. Uh, but I'm, you know, it took me a long time to get here, man. Uh, I'm honestly um, not in no rush for the belt or for a shot at the at whoever been successful between Zulu or BK. But you know, if it means me, me having one more fight or two more fights, and they're not ready for me, I'll take it. But again, you know, the goal is to be champ, and uh, I'll get there. I'll get there. Hundred percent. And um, obviously, the, the the Durban fans will be uh, there in full support. So, so what could you tell the fans they can expect from you come fight night? You know, the Durban fans have been have seen uh, the, the growth of me as a, a man and as a fighter. From AFL days to MFC days to how I fight now in the EFC, they know every fight I come to fight. I bring it. I'm fast. I'm I'm quick. My f my feet are always moving. So you know you can't you won't expect anything less from me. Um, I've been working on all rounds of my game, um, especially the the way I finish fights. So uh, I think yeah, Dublin is gonna be in. It's it's apparently it's winter. 
here in Durban, but <laughs> I'm going to make it hot that night. Too. <laughs> it's going to be hot that night. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, how, how do you see yourself uh, beating Octavio? Look, uh, I want to be pressured into uh, how I'm going to finish him. <laughs> um, I didn't say finish, I said beat. <laughs> no, 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 no. What do you ask? So, well, how do you see the fight going is what I'm really trying to figure it out. Um, okay, obviously, okay. stylistically, it's very interesting. So, I, I'd just like to hear your opinion on the matter. But, you know, at the end of the day, he's, he is long and rangy. I, I see him um, uh, using his uh, using his range against me. Uh, but ultimately, these are things that we went back to the drawing board and looked at. And, um, you know, we approached this fight according to his style of fighting and uh, his body size and... Uh, uh, how much of surface area I can cover yeah, on, on him and t- tactically, because at the end of the day, you know, sometimes the toughest guy always gets you hurt, but the clever guy wins the fight. So, sure. uh, uh, so we, did, we we looked at several things and um, it's not something that we're just going to win when we get in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just got to listen to my corner and trust what my coach is saying. Okay. And are you a guy that's big on game plans or are you uh, the other side of the camp that's just always trusting in your own abilities rather than really try and dissect what your opponent's going to do? Yeah, as I said, you know, um, fighting for me is, is an intelligent sport. Um, it's generally the more uh, higher IQ fighter that wins the fight who can um, use the gap, find the gaps or the flaws within his opponent and, um, you know, expose those elements on the night so that's exactly what we're looking at uh, I, I try not to take damage in short in fights sure. um and but uh and, but the same token not not being on the back foot and working out the counter but you know we really you know we do we have a game plan for the fight and uh yeah just a matter of putting as i said putting the puzzle together 100 percent, man and uh would you have any any last messages for your opponent uh, I hope he's training hard. Uh, I've put in a long, hard camp. My my weight's on check. Everything's ready to go. Um, I can fight right now if I, if I could. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we got one more week to go. Uh, there's nothing more that we both could do now. So I hope uh, he's listening so we can put a good show for the Durban fans, my home crowd. Sure. Uh, and uh, the best man will get his hand raised on the night. 100%, bro. And just in closing, man, where can people follow you uh, online, social media, all that sort of stuff? Okay, cool. So uh, on Facebook, uh, you can catch my name, Daniel Moodley. And on Instagram, it's also Daniel Moodley. And uh, on Twitter as well. 100%. Uh, Moodley. <laughs> yeah, that's Mamu. It's M A M U, eh? Yeah, correct. 100%, bro. And we, we wish you all the best for fight night, man. Thanks so much for giving up some time. We know it's it's, it's chaos normally this this time just before the fight. Nah, it's chill, man, because uh, it's uh, you have to be ready for things like these and, you know, being on weight and things like that. So it's cool. Awesome, bro. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time, bud. And, and we wish you all the best for the last bit, um, cutting any weight and finishing up in your camp. And, and we'll chat to you soon, bro. Shot, brother. See you on the other side. Thank you, man. Ciao. Bye, bye. Welcome to the era of Amanda Lino. Put that belt around the way she earned it. Amanda Lino. It's our first ever women's champion. She is an absolute phenom. Rizlin, the lioness of the Atlas, Zoak! Rizlin Zoak is an entire weight division above Amanda Lino and called her out. And Amanda said, you know what? Let's do this. We made a new title available in honor of this fight. On 26 May, South Africa's Mad Dog meets the Lion from Morocco for the Women's Bantamweight Championship of the World, EFC 70. Tickets and broadcast information at efcworldwide.com.